as always, if you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before moving on. We can go ahead and draw a picture that captures the information that's being described. So here we have the football being launched with an initial speed of 25 meters per second, and it's going to travel a horizontal distance of 50 meters and reach the goalpost, which has a final vertical height or distance of 3.44 meters. And it turns out that there are going to be two angles that we're looking for. One of them is the smallest angle, and then the other one is the largest angle that will get the ball to clear the goalposts. We know, of course, that because the ball is launched with an initial speed at a particular angle, that we can break the initial speed into its x and its y components. And, of course, in this case, the x component would be the initial speed times the cosine of the angle, and the y component is the initial speed times the sine of the angle. We could then refer to the following equation from kinematics in both the x and the y direction. In the x direction, in projectile motion, we know the acceleration is zero, so that will knock away this term. In the y direction, the acceleration is going to be negative g, so we can substitute that in for the acceleration. We could solve the first equation for time, t, by dividing both sides by v naught cos theta. We can then take this expression for the time and plug it into the time in the y direction equation. We'll have to plug it in both in that spot there and then in that spot. We can see in this clustered term here that the v naught will cancel out and then we have an identity that the sine of theta over the cosine of theta is equal to the tangent of theta. And then in this clustered term we're going to go ahead and square the numerator to make x squared. We'll also square the denominator to make v naught squared and cos squared of theta. And at this point we have a simplified expression for y, the final position of the football. Why don't we go ahead and clean up the workspace? And it turns out that our next step will depend on a particular trigonometric identity. So let's take a look at that. Now, I will definitely admit that this trigonometric identity is somewhat obscure, but it does turn out that 1 over cos squared theta is equal to 1 plus tan squared theta. If we look carefully at our equation, we indeed have a 1 over cosine squared theta. If we write a 1 in there, and sort of circle our way around, we can see that we have the 1 over cos squared theta. So we can replace that with 1 plus tan squared theta. We'll then go ahead and distribute the gx squared over 2 v naught squared into the parentheses. Don't forget to distribute the minus sign as well. We'll notice in the second and third term that we have a factor of 1 half. So we're just going to offset that 1 half from both of those terms. We will next subtract y from both sides of the equation so that we can get it equal to 0. We'll then go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. That will effectively change the sign of all four terms on the right-hand side. And then finally, we're just going to shuffle the terms so that they appear in this order. Take a moment to pause the video and just make sure that you can see how we have simply scrambled the terms so that they appear in this particular order. Now, admittedly, it might be a little bit difficult to see where we're going with this. Notice that we have this term, or this factor, I should say, of 1 half gx squared over v naught squared. We're going to go ahead and let the value c equal that 1 half times gx squared over v naught squared. And in fact, we can plug in all the known values. We know that g is 9.8, x we knew from the given information was 50, and then v naught was given as 25. So we'll go ahead and plug in. And when you simplify that, you should get a value of 19.6. So that means this bracketed factor is 19.6, as is the value of this factor. We also know the value of y was 3.44, so we can plug that in. And then we can combine these like terms. We also know the value of x, of course. And so now what we have is a second order equation for tan theta. We can actually use the quadratic formula to solve for tan theta. And when we calculate the value on the right hand side of the quadratic formula, we obtain two values. And then if we take the inverse tangent of both sides of these equations, we will see that one angle turns out to be approximately 63 degrees. The other angle turns out to be approximately 31 degrees. And so the least angle for part A becomes the 31 degrees, and the greatest angle is 63 degrees. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen and I'll do my best to post a solution.